Now this movie is going to show you two very important concepts within Illustrator. Uh, the first one is stacking order, which we will change via the arrange menu. And what stacking order means is what order are things stacked on top of each other. Uh, by default, when you create new elements in Illustrator, they will be the topmost element. If you created something else before that and you put the new thing on top of it, then it will be overlapping the first object. So the other thing we're gonna talk about is groups, and that is how once you have got everything arranged just the way you want it in regards to a certain element or a group of elements, then you can group it together so they don't accidentally, you know, move something or change a relationship. It also means that you can take that group and you can resize it, rotate it, move it with just a single click. And so that's very helpful. So let's start off with stacking order. And just as a quick review of all this, everything right now are just single elements. Um, some of these words are broken into two or three parts. Um, we are going to work with these and uh, bend them to our will, Ouch. if you will. And so the first thing I wanna do is I would like to bring the ING in front of this orange line to give the illusion that this piece of string or whatever is weaving in and out of those two parts of the word. So I have my black arrow tool, I click on the ING to make it active, and then I go up to the object menu. The second item under the object menu is arrange. And you'll see you have four choices here. Bring to front, bring forward, send backward, send to back. So initially we're just going to do bring to front or send to back, meaning it will make it all, bring it all the way up to the very top or put it all the way on the very bottom. So I'm just going to say bring to front for this and that moves the type on top of that shape. So now we have a stacking order. So stack is on the bottom, the orange string is the second item on top of stack, and then ing is the very topmost item within that group. Okay, so let's do another one here. So we have order and in three parts. So I am going to mark the line and the dir. So those are both marked. And then I'm gonna to go to the object menu and I am going to pull down to send to back. And so now you have the string going behind the or, in front of the dir and behind the ampersand. Okay, easy, right? Yes, dear. So I think you got it. Stacking order equates to what order things are on top of each other. All right, so let's move up here. So now I got all these gray circles in one purple circle, and I would like to put that purple circle in its proper place. Now you'll notice what happens is that this one here is overlapped by this one here, which is overlapped by this one here. Right now the circle's kind of all the way to the back. Now, if I mark this and I just say bring to front, then it's gonna be in front of both of these two circles. What I'd prefer to do is bring it up just one step. And that's where bring forward and send backward come into play. So with that circle marked, back to my arrange menu, and I'm gonna say bring forward. And that will bring it forward just one step at a time. And now that purple circle is exactly in the arrangement I want it to be. Okay, so last thing down here at the bottom in terms of stacking order. So I've done something a little bit tricky here. I have split these letters in half because what I wanna do is to create the illusion that this ring is going both in front and behind the letters and it's encircling it. And so in order to do that, some of the part of the letter has to go behind and the other part has to stay in front. <clears throat> So I am going to bring the ring all the way to the front first. And so now you can see a little bit more easily what we need to do. Obviously the ring will be covering up the bottom of the letters and the top of the letters back here, um, I need to bring them in front so it looks like the ring is behind them. So I'm just gonna carefully go in and shift click on the top of each of these letters. And then before I move anything though, 
wouldn't it be nice if I decide to change this again later, if I could just make that be a single group so that with a single click, I could just mark that whole thing and do what I wanted to do with it. So I'm gonna do that. The tops of those five letters are marked. Damn. Oops, six letters are marked. And I'm gonna go to the object menu, and this time I'm gonna pull down to the third line, which is group. And so I'm gonna click away to unmark that, but you'll notice that now when I click on any member of that group, it will mark the entire group. Now it's a simple process to go up to arrange and choose bring to front, and we have thus completed our illusion. Now I'm gonna go ahead and group this bottom too, so this time I'm gonna mark them all by just drawing a marquee. And remember, you just have to touch your elements with any part of the marquee. It will mark them all. And I can go back here to group, and that is now available to me with but a single click. So grouping is a very important thing you're gonna want to do a lot because it keeps you from messing things up or it makes it easier to access them um, once you've made the group. Okay, so last thing here is what if I don't want a group anymore? I don't know. Well, that's a really good question. Thank you for bringing that up. I can go in and I can mark the group and I can pull down to ungroup. And just like that, what was a group is now not a group anymore at all. So that's one way to do it, and that's fine if you know you wanna keep it permanently ungrouped. But I would actually just like to go in and make a change, but, but leave the group as it is. So I'm gonna undo, I'm gonna hit Command Z a couple of times, or Control Z for you PC users. Okay, I think we're good here. So now with a single click, yes, I have my group back. So what if I just for some stupid reason decide that I would like the top half of the O to be a different color? Oh. Well, if you watch the previous video, black versus white arrow tool, then you already know how to do this, but I'm gonna get my white arrow tool, which uh, if you do need to know more about this, watch that video. But I can go in and I can just click in the middle of that shape and you'll see it won't mark any other shape in the group. And so it's isolated now. And I can easily go in and uh, again, I have no idea why I want this to be another color, but there you go, I've done it. And if I get my black arrow tool again and click on this, you'll see the whole group is still intact and you're ready to move on with your workflow.